I never thought I would be doing this, so I'm gonna be talking about it in this video, and I have two special guests that will be joining me. Ladies, let's get this beauty started. All right, so I'm gonna show you some new products that I bought because I never thought I would be growing out my hair. Like I never thought I would allow gray hair to be long for me. First of all, I didn't, I didn't expect to have gray hair in my 30s. <laughs> so when I cut it off to the bob in 2016, I was like, that's it. This is the style for the rest of my life. I'm never gonna do anything. And then the pandemic hit and everything closed. And I thought two weeks, okay, four weeks, okay, it's three months now. So I just decided, you know what, I'm gonna let it go. And then I started thinking, oh my gosh, you know, now I have to deal with like that whole other wave of what society says. Like when you're older, you have to have shorter hair. It has to be above your shoulders. It looks old, it looks drab, it looks dreary. It looks like you've let yourself go. I mean, ladies, I could go on and on. And you know what my opinion is, I really could care less. So this video is all about the fact that I never thought I was gonna go with long hair, gray. I don't know how long it's gonna be, but this, I have a ponytail as you can see. And then this is, this, this is my hair now. It's, you know what, I'm actually loving the fact that it's unruly, it's not perfect. Remember, if you look back at my videos, and you know if you've been following me for a while on Instagram and here on YouTube, like my hair was always blown out at dry bar. It was like so perfect. It was like so coiffed. It was like, okay, you know, like I can do this. Now I'm like, what is happening? So. I'm kind of enjoying the fact that I'm allowing myself that grace. I'm allowing myself to say, okay, it's not perfect. Okay, it's a little frizzy. Okay, wh whatever. Like I have been dealing with a lot more bigger issues than my frizzy hair and my unruly hair. And I've been maintaining it. Like, listen, this is just doing its thing. It's, it's fine. But I wanted to bring you two women that are in their 50s that have long hair, we all, I, hopefully we all know who I'm talking about. They've been featured on my blog, on my Instagram, and it's so incredible, ladies. So before I get to them, I'm gonna tell you who they are though. I have Simone from The Silver Woman. She has a beautiful Instagram account. We met through Instagram, actually in October of 2018. She saw I was in New York. Um, she's like, can we meet for a drink? I was like, yes, I happen to be in the same neighborhood that she lives in. It was so perfect. It was so serendipitous that I, we had such a great time. It was so, it was really surreal. So then she wanted me to do a photo shoot with her last July when I was in New York for work. So I did, that was incredible. It was a, she did something totally different. It was a hat series of women's hat stores or women hat designers. And so it was just so different for me. I mean, listen, I'm very wound up. I'm very hyper. I'm very type A. I, you know, everything has to be, you know, like I got to get everything done or I have, you know, I have lookbooks of my photo shoots. I style. I mean, I'm really intense. Simone is the total opposite. And I love her for that. And I love how calm she is and, and just, just how, kind she is and she really balances me so i you know i get so worked up with our photo shoot and she's like just relax she's like you know it, she's just so different and and i think that's why our energies connect and then i featured um caroline in dubai les boucher she is so beautiful if you don't follow her account i'm linking everyone's stuff below so you can follow them and she is in dubai she is just amazing she is just you know, a very pro age. She has long, beautiful silver hair. And again, ladies, even if you don't have silver, gray or white hair, this is about the fact that can you have long hair being older? Can you? And you know who makes that rule is you. No one else does. It doesn't matter. But I wanted to hear from Simone because I wanted to, to give me inspiration. I wanted to hear from Caroline. I wanted you to learn from them. And I wanted to bring it together on my channel because guess what? That's what I do. I feature other women. And right now I can't feature them in the studio because of what's going on. So managing my crazy hair right now, I Simone actually told me about um, Rita Hazen's line. This is a balm. It's a actual shine balm. It's really nice. So I bought it and it smells divine it doesn't smell overpowering it's a beautiful beautiful balm that i warm up in my hands and then what's really it's really been 
taking this stuff away, right, underneath, and giving me lots and lots of beautiful shine when I put it in my hair. Another product of hers that I decided when I was on the website to do was to do her True Color Ultimate Shine Gloss. So you use this after you shampoo, before you conditioner. So it's like in the middle, right? So this is revives color, enhances shine, prevents brassiness. So it's called breaking brass. But on the back it says here too, add a hint of tint and shine between salon visits, prevents brassiness and orange hues for blondes, brunettes, and gray hair. It's a foam, it's so cool. I was like, <laughs> in the shower, I was like, okay, it's a foam. So I use it, it's purple, and then I put it on my hair. You can leave it on for a minute or you can leave it on a little extended depending on what you want. And then you rinse out and you put your conditioner on. My hair has been so shiny, shiny. And I was thinking of foam, it's not gonna work. Looks gorgeous. So I've been thrilled with these two products, the Shine Balm and then in my True Color Ultimate Shine Gloss. My hair needs shine, right? We know that. So another product I was really like pumping and putting on a lot, didn't care, is the Fido Lease. This is a serum, I've had this for a while. It's a finishing serum, ultra glossy. You can see I have a theme here, right? I want my hair to be longer and glossier. Unruly, frizzy, and rebellious hair. So I just put some pumps of this on. Look, I'll put it on over the balm, right? It's nice, it's not um, oily or greasy feeling. And then again, I'm just putting it in my hair because I want it to be, I want this shine. I just really want my hair to shine and look really pretty. And um, I, this is what I do. I just keep, and I really feel that it's less, like, you know what, I've had plenty of frizzy hair on this, on this channel, but I just feel like it really tames it down. And then, you know, what I'll do a brush with, I've invested in the Mason Pearson brush. This brush is known for distributing the oils in your hair, like, it just adds the shine too. So my whole theme is about shine, looking beautiful, adding these on. And guess what? You wanna know what my best little discovery was? I don't even know what kind of hairstyle I just made. This is weird. I feel like I just made myself 1950s. That was easy, right? Little, <laughs> no, I don't, that's like, the, that's a little weird. Let's go back to Untamed. Um, this is great. I have this in the rose. I mentioned it before. I don't think on lives or on, I don't know, some, somewhere you know, I'm. oh, on my Beauty Reinvented Live Facebook, it's a private group, I mentioned the rose one that I use from the Mason Francis, this Paris Perfume Hair Scented Mist. Now, this is Baccarat Rouge 540. This is a very expensive perfume. I think it's like 390, I don't know, it's crazy expensive. So, I did the next best thing and I got the Hair Mist. This is under $100, it's great. It totally, like if your hair, you don't want that dry shampoo smell or what have you, I spritz this into my hair. Remember, it doesn't have alcohol, so it's not gonna dry it out. So it's the next, I'm like cheating, right? I'm getting the same smell. Oh, I'm getting the same smell, but I'm not paying the price for the perfume. So I love it. I love when my hair smells beautiful. You walk by someone, you tossle your hair, now that it's a little bit longer, so let's get into what my video is really all about, is can you let your hair be long and be older? And let's listen to what Simone has to say about that. Uh, well, firstly, I believe anyone can have any hair length that they want. If it makes you happy, then you know you, you do that. It doesn't matter what your age is. Age shouldn't ever stop you doing what you want. But then, I mean, beauty-wise, I mean, let's be honest, good, thick, healthy hair does, you know, looks great when it's longer. Um, you know, I'm, I'm jealous of those people who have that lots of fine hair and they have those perfect little bobs and, you know, it just falls perfectly because I can't have that. I, you know, I look like a yucca plant. Um, <laughs> well, you know, we both have that very, you know, um, you know, and this is, uh, I've really smoothed this down. Usually it, it's wild. So, um, you know, I, I think that the more importantly when you're older is finding what suits you because your face does change a bit. And, um, you know, your hair texture, a lot of people, especially when they go through menopause, can have, you know, their hair can suffer a little bit, even pregnancies or all different things. So I think to have long hair, it's good to have it in good condition. Hence why I, I did just, I mean, my hair's still pr 
pretty long, but I did just whack off the last dyed bit of my hair. And it was, it was like a shrub. It was awful because, first of all, it was bleached and dyed and it's been with me for a long time. And it was just amazing to have that cut off just how it made my hair like bouncier and, and just look nicer. So that's my thing. But if someone, you know, and if someone doesn't have, you know, the greatest quality hair and they like it long, you keep it long. That's what makes you happy. Isn't she just adorable? She is so fun. We had such a great time. It was nighttime for me, morning for her. So she was, you know, full of life and ready to share. And I think that's just, you know, very interesting because, you know, just like Simone says, you, you know, it's, uh, it's really up to you. Like if you want to have long hair, then you just do it. You know, it doesn't matter about your age. She made some really good points though about how our faces change and different face shapes and really finding the style that best suits you. But Caroline also was talking about, you know, going gray and having gray hair and, and kind of how, you know, was it easy for her? Was it hard for her? And just with like having longer hair. So I'm gonna like, let's go in behind this video and hear what she had to say about that. I think society tells us so many things and it's up to us what we choose to live by. And I remember my, my mother had gray hair. She had white hair. She started going gray when she was in her twenties. So I was brought up around a gray haired person, lady, woman. Um, and I think many people didn't. So it was, it was quite normal for me. And it wasn't until people started saying to me, you shouldn't do that. And that it's aging you and all of the negatives that I thought, oh, well, maybe I shouldn't. And so went through the dying process because you want to fit in, don't you? Until you find yourself, which can be at any age. But it wasn't, I probably should have, could have done it earlier, but it wasn't the right time. And I think there's a right time for everybody. And it's really hard not to listen to what people say around you isn't it? For, for about anything, about it, whether it's the length of your skirts or, um, I don't know. There are so many negative comments. And so I think from, from whether it be gray or anything, it's to try and be kind to each other and accept that we are all different. So both of the ladies really agree upon that it's about your personal style. It's about who you are. It's about you feeling happy on the inside and that really radiating out on the outside. And, you know, I just really loved having these two chats with them and, you know, feeling very honored that we have the communication of being able to Zoom like this and feel not so distant and so far from each other. And so another question I had was, how do you take care of your hair now? So I was thinking I didn't have to really do too much because it was shorter and it was in a short bob and it kind of changed lengths, but it was always short. So now with it being longer and you seeing more of it and it being more hair, what do they do? Are they simple? I kind of figured out. <laughs> I knew what they were going to be, but I just wanted to hear it from them. So you don't, you know, they're very simple, but so you don't have to have a million products. I don't want you to feel overwhelmed if you want to grow your hair out now and you're feeling like I'm going to have to have more products. Let's listen to Simone and how she really treats her hair. As you know, I'm not a very, um, God, my mother would love it if I was like you and a little bit more. I'm lucky if I get a brush through my hair most of the days. I'm very low maintenance. Um, when, now that my hair's natural, I have to do so little, which is fantastic. I, I barely need conditioner now. I honestly, I barely need conditioner. And um, for years, I was actually laughing because I said, oh, you know, my hair is so dry and I used to spend a fortune on um, conditioners because, you know, I had a bleach and tone and all those highlights. And for years, I was always heavily dyed and all different colours. And I just always thought, oh, I've just got very dry hair. Uh, the, the person with oily skin, why would I then have dry hair? It didn't make sense. Um, and then now that it's, I, I, I honestly, I wash it, I don't wash it very often, once a week is plenty. Um, and I literally just put a little bit of conditioner on the ends. Simple, right? I told you, she's very simple. I mean, 
does, you know, her hair is so gorgeous and I'm sure if she used a ton of stuff, it would just weigh it all down. So it's very interesting to see that she just kind of takes a very low profile approach to maintaining her hair and it being very long and not washing it a lot. And I think that's a very big tip is not to wash, overwash your hair. And Caroline had some interesting little uh, tidbits and, and hair tricks that she does that we can actually learn from also with maintaining our hair. I would say I'm basically quite a lazy person. <laughs> I like easy, everything easy. Um, and I do have good hair gene at the end of the day. I think you do too. Um, I'm very lucky to have quite thick hair. Um, I try not to use a hair elastic too often. I uh, try to twist it up and use a clip uh, to give it less stress. And I try not to wash it too often. So I wash it maybe once a week. I had a great um, comment from somebody actually just today saying, put some water in with your shampoo. And so it goes through your hair much more easily because you've got to clean your scalp, your roots more than the rest of your hair. So during the week, I tend to stroke the shampoo through the top of my hair uh, just to give it a bit more life if I feel that it needs it. Otherwise, I just rinse it after exercise rather than shampooing it. Uh, I use coconut oil maybe once a week just for the ends. Um, I don't blow dry it. So the last question I asked Simone and also Caroline was, you know, what's their view on aging? Like, what, what is, what, what's the message that they send out to the world, to other women, to be an inspiration? And I really loved both of their answers. So Simone really kind of, you know, got into a little bit more in depth of what she really likes to take out of aging. So let's listen to what she has to say. My, my main mission has always been to take the fear out of it. And I think it's a wonderful journey. I mean, of course, it's a journey. That's it. And I, I, I think that the, the, which I've done in the past when I was a little younger, is we, we're not going to stay the same. And, you know, I feel, you know, we have to embrace that, that we do change. Our minds change. Physically we change. Um, and I, and it's not this kind of acceptance and just, you know, letting it all go. Of course, I, I totally believe in um, living as, you know, vibrantly as possible and trying to look the best that we can because, A, it makes us feel good and, and to be healthy, you know. So, but I think in the mind as well, it's this thing of just realising it's this lovely journey and we're like these organisms that always change. And I think it would be very... Could you imagine if either one of us would pine wanting to look like what we did at 20. I, I can't, I'm not going to stress myself out about wanting to physically look like I did when I was 20 years old. It's different. Every, every, it just changes. And it doesn't mean that it gets worse. That's what it is. It doesn't, it's not, I think most people think of old age as decay in a way. And it's, I just look at it as it's a change. And, you know, I don't know. I mean, I think that, um, you know, I, I'm a much more evolved person than when I was young. You have just something more to offer a little bit. I mean, youth is wonderful. It's the period of discovery. And every every bit of your, every time in your life has, you know, such great bits. And, you know, and there's really hard bits too. And we all know we've all overcome things. And, you know, sometimes it can be very heavy on us. But we come through it and... That's the journey, isn't it? Isn't that the one thing that we really have at the forefront is fear? And I love that she takes that out of it. And she really made me feel comfortable. I, you know, it's like talking to a sister when I talk to her. I just feel so, you know, enlivened and, and, and like, you know, wow, she's doing it and she looks beautiful and she has such a great positive attitude about aging. I really like that. And Caroline actually had some things to say to me that I was surprised about. And I think you might be too, but I love how authentic she was. I love how transparent she was too. And I told her I really appreciate that because, you know, you almost feel sometimes like, oh, I have gray hair, but you know, I can't do X, Y, and Z. So let's listen to what Caroline had to say and, and how transparent she was with us. I, there is no right and wrong way, but 
I don't want to be old and wrinkly. So I am going to not look younger, but I want to, I don't want to continue getting older at the rate that I would if I did nothing. So I do Botox. I have had Profilo, which is amazing um, injections uh, in your face uh, with hyaluronic acid. Uh, that I really think uh, is worthwhile. Uh, but it, it's trapping the moisture in your skin. So it's not a filler. Um, I've done fillers, didn't really like the effect of them. And at some stage, we'll probably have a lower facelift uh, because I don't like the everything going south. And I don't like the, the sad mouth that happens over time. Um, I think people look miserable when they have sad mouths. And I even... I, I, when I'm walking around shopping, even in the supermarket, I try to make my mouth horizontal <laughs> instead of <laughs> downward. I concentrate really hard on it. Um, I don't, I just, I, that, but that's me. But then on the other hand, you see some people, some really interesting faces that are full of character and wrinkles who look fabulous, but I don't want to do that. So were you surprised? I was surprised actually. And I was like, wow, it just made me feel good that we all don't have to be on the same page. Like, you know, if you want to do Botox or you want to do a facelift or you want to do breast augmentation, whatever it is that is going to drive you to feeling confident, to feeling content, to feeling beautiful, that's what you do. You answer to yourself. You don't answer to society or, oh, you have gray hair, you have to be all natural, or that's going against what you are putting out there. Everybody's individual and gray hair is just a color. It does not put you into a category of, oh, this is what you do and this is what you eat and this is how you can do things. That's not, that's not how it works. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I wanted to bring you something interesting to hear from two other women that are in their 50s, living a full, beautiful life, aging gracefully, aging at, at, with their rules and the way that they want to. And so ladies, until my next video, I'll see you later. Oh, God.